My name is Sandra Seidel, and I'm the chair of the ADA Accessibility Committee. The meeting is now called to order. Please silence all electronic devices for the duration of this meeting. Welcome to the February 16, 2023 ADA Committee meeting. The meeting format is hybrid, and we are at the Hard Administrative Office at 1201 East 7th Avenue in Tampa, Florida. Would you all look at the screens of your devices and image that the American flag is displayed? Will you all please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have one person that's pre-registered to provide public comment. As Madam. a reminder, comments are limited to three minutes per person. Ms. Chisholm, you are recognized to provide your comments. Madam Chair, may I back up and, and do a roll call really quickly? Sorry, I can't hear you. Can I, can I do a roll call? May I back up and do a roll call? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, committee member Jenkins, committee member Levi indicated she would be absent. Committee member LeBou? Present. Committee member Mills indicated that she would be absent. Committee member Poncho? Present. Committee member Seidel, or committee chair Present. Seidel? Present. Committee member Williams indicated that she would be absent. Committee member Wazork? I'm here, present. Thank you. And then I do believe we have um, the alternate for Mr. Clark here as yeah. well. Right here. That's right. Jerry Stickney. Oh, we have you set up right here. And I'm with him. So Mr. Uh, Stickney is here for um, committee member Clark. Oh, at this time you, do, you still do not have a physical quorum, Madam Chair. You still require one more. Is Ms. Chisholm ready? And Ms. Chisholm does not appear to be on the line. Is she? No. I think we have someone in the audience that would like to speak. hard way to find it. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to address the committee. Um, I hope I can do it in three minutes. Uh, I have uh, a few things I want to bring to the attention of the committee. Uh, first of all, the communication about important meetings is very lacking uh, with heart. Uh, I will share with you that on December 15th, or sorry, December 13th, I received an email message, and the message said simply that, uh, I believe it said, there will be a, a heart advisory committee open house on Wednesday. That was the sum of the message. Wednesday, which Wednesday? What time? Uh, and it was received... On, on Tuesday, so I, I assumed it was the following day, Wednesday, but I had to call Raquel and ask her what time the meeting was going to be, and uh, she didn't know either, of course. So yesterday I received a, a message about this meeting, which said, if you wish to make comments, you must register to make your comments by 5 p.m. today. I received the message at 7.58 p.m. The challenge that I'm continuing to have, that I have stood at this podium numerous times to discuss with Hart and to share with them, 
is the problem of announcements. Blind people rely upon the announcements and the ADA regulations specifically say that the purpose of the announcements is so that people who are blind or have visual impairments can maintain orientation. Uh, that just does not happen. When the announcements are made, they are very ineffective. Um, when they are not made, well, they're not made. Uh, in spite of the fact that it is not the requirement of the enunciator to make the announcements, it's up to the operators. And even if you bring it to the attention of the operators, their excuse is the enunciator is not working, but they failed to make the announcements. Um, this is a legal requirement that Hart is bound to. And just like any legal requirement, there needs to be penalties for it. If a bus does not stop at a railroad crossing, there are specific penalties if they're observed doing that. And those similar penalties need to be applied to this legal requirement. So I want to move on to what happened to me on Monday. I had an urgent doctor's appointment that I made. I called for a paratransit on demand uh, service from Yellow Cab at 109. I did not get a cab until 121, or I'm sorry, till 221, and my appointment was at 220. After the appointment at 320, I called for a yellow cab. That cab arrived at 621. So on demand is a misnomer. Uh, the, con the yellow cab is completely unable to fulfill their contract. And I think that Hart needs to look at other alternatives in order to fulfill this need that we have, or they just need to discontinue the program. My doctor's office employees had to wait an hour and 21 minutes for me to leave before they could go home because they could not leave as long as there was a patient on the property. So thank you very much for allowing me to speak to the committee. Thank you. We'll table the approval of the minutes until we can get a quorum. Um, please read through your minutes and uh, we'll discuss them later. Next on the agenda is the chairman's report. Um, I asked last time about having notifications put on the van about the meetings. Um, there have been none. I, and I, I, I've taken the van twice this week. There have been no notifications. And the only reason I noticed that there's one out here in the lobby, why can't those be put on the vans? I now know how other clients feel when they say they're afraid to go on the interstate on the vans. And um, because I had two incidents lately that scared me to death. My wheelchair tipped over. One time, the um, van driver slammed on the brakes, and I go sliding out of my wheelchair. And that's despite having the, the seat belt from my wheelchair plus the one on the van. That scares me. And it's to the point where they're using the interstate and going just as fast as everybody else. And I understand that. And I also understand that you're making hundreds of, of trips a day but let's make it a safe trip for all of us. Uh, my other question is, a lot of us are getting uh, new um, Medicare insurance companies that have a health benefits card that says we can use it on public transportation. And my question to Hart is, can we use that for Flamingo fares on Hart Plus, the bus, or the cab? Madam Chair, may I respond? Yes. So we will definitely um, look into 
the changes and see how we can make sure that if there are any opportunities to be um, available for you to use the, the funding the way you just mentioned, we'll be able to report back to you on that. Mr. Alvarado, do you have anything additional to share? No, well, uh, my group will take the lead on getting that information. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the Heart Plus and Customer Choice Voucher Program Update. Mr. Omar Alvareta, Chief Delivery Officer, will you present, please? Sure. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Committee, Ms. Grand. Uh, here's a quick update for January on uh, our Heart Plus and our voucher program. So January, we provided 16,180 paratransit trips. The on-time performance for the pickup window was 75.44%, and for the appointments was 93.39%. In November, we had an on-time performance of 76.86, and in December, it was up to 81.42. We've added four new drivers uh, to the pool, and we're in the process of hiring five more to start in the early May markup. Uh, or they'll start in March, uh, prior to the markup, excuse me. On average, uh, Heart Plus trips are averaging 790 trips on the weekday, 300 on Saturday, and 212 on Sunday. Yellow Cab right now is performing 2,000 trips for us, and 634 of those were wheelchair users. Year to date, Yellow Cab service has delivered um, just under 400,000 trips. Uh, we've imposed 3.5% penalties, or 3.5% uh, penalties have been imposed to Yellow Cab. Uh, as we're seeing our demand go up, we're also trying to leverage Yellow Cab as well for some of those peak periods in the morning and in the afternoon to be able to, to, be able to pick up uh, some of those trips when we get to capacity. And that is the report for this month. Thank you. Any questions? Are there any questions? Thank you for providing the details. Um, are there certain thresholds that um, a paratransit service is supposed to be meeting as far as the uh, pickup window, you, you shared some great detailed statistics, and I'm just wondering, is there a, any type of requirements that, you know, the pickups have to be within a certain time period, like you have to meet 80% across the board, or is there any thresholds like that that the regu regulations well, state? You mean in terms of, like, what our standard is for <laughs> on-time performance? Uh, so really, overall, we want to be at 80% okay. uh, on the, on the uh, what do you call on the pickup window side. Okay. Uh, on the appointment side, it's 90%, so we're 93%. We're kind of in that ballpark. Uh, I'll say right now, like, the using of yellow cab is something that we're hoping is going to help uh, complement some of these overages, which is obviously affecting some of the performance on that side. Uh, so we're hoping over time that that will help uh, from that perspective as well. Uh, additionally, we're in the process of finalizing the RFP uh, for the system we spoke about at the last meeting. Uh, so that should be finalized and in full deployment by May. And that will also help us make better use of some of the vehicles, make it easier for canceling trips and, and bring trips online, which will definitely have uh, an impact on our performance. And it will give you more visibility to as riders as to where the vehicle is in, in real time. Excuse me. So 80%. Typically, is a threshold that Hart tries that, to meet. That, that I would say is the standard that we try okay. to meet. Okay, and is that as a is that also possibly a requirement that's made by the feds at all for services? I, it's been quite some long no, time. No, uh, on the fed side, it's really more of a pickup window standard. Okay. Uh, so you know you've got to be picked up within a within half hour. Correct. Okay. Behind in front of the trip. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, well, well, we. Where, where are we in the agenda? Where are we on the agenda? Reports. Number four. Four B. The last item on the first page of the agenda. Heart Plus and Customer Care Voucher Program Update. All right. Uh, I have a couple questions. Comment, if I may. Madam Chair, I'm sorry. He would like to know if he can make a comment. Yes. Uh, I drive the van almost every day, and I see all the new drivers. Almost, they do a good job, but you have one 
or do they have not been trained properly? Uh, it was a guy that hit me up the other day. It, it, it was this study in the evening. It dark. It dark. So when you get in the van, you got the light off in the van. So how do you see what you're supposed to do? It's dark on the outside, it's dark on the inside. How can you see the lock? So he's trying to look for the lock. I had to tell him, you got to turn the light on, you can't see the dark. Then he, when he put the jeep back on, he put the jeep up behind my head. He's supposed to go across the way, not behind my head. Uh, one of the good ways to tell a good driver is to listen to the, the client. I had another client, another driver that was going to the red dot on Alamo Drive. I'm telling you, we are almost on Alamo Drive now. If you turn right, you go to Alamo and turn left, you go straight down. But I guess the GPS went to go on anything. Uh, that would have took away out the way. So, she did listen, and she did say thank you for letting her know the right way to go. So that, that was good. Now, I want to ask you about this, the, the box on, on top of the, about the driver's head, where the manifest is. How come it doesn't have GPS? Madam Chair, may I respond? Yes. Okay. So, um, good to see you, Mr. Arizona, and you raised some good points. So, just to summarize a couple of the items, and I'm going to ask my colleague, Mr. Campbell, to approach the podium to um, respond to your first question or statement. So, um, first, I want to thank you for recognizing that we have some really great drivers out there, and I'm happy to hear that you have had some good experiences. Um, I also appreciate you sharing with us the opportunity to make some improvements. So I'm very confident that a part of the training is to make sure you turn on the interior lights, especially if it's dark outside, like you mentioned, you got picked up at 6.30, it's dark outside, it was dark inside. How can you accurately make sure that you're securing passengers if you can't see? So I will allow Mr. Campbell to um, provide a little overview of the training and then we'll ensure that this is a refresher to make sure that people are turning on the interior lights when it's dark outside. Mr. Campbell. Madam Chair, committee, Ms. LeGrand. Uh, Arizona, I've known you for, for years and I appreciate the, this feedback. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit offline and kind of get some details to that, to that specific scenario um, without making excuses, not knowing if there was a mechanical problem or something, you know, Maybe the operator started during the day, and as the sun went down, they failed to realize. But absolutely, the lights should be on anytime any revenue vehicle is in revenue service. Bus, paratransit, streetcar, whatever the case may be, for everybody's safety, we do operate with the lights on. And the only time the lights should be off is if the vehicle is deadheading out of service and, and coming back to the, to the yard. Well, then, you know, why are you here? Like in the old days, they used to put the drivers and the wish is to let them feel how it is riding in that van. Do you do that? I don't believe they do that, and I do, I do like that concept. Um, what Mr. Jenkins is talking about is back in the day in training, we used to offer the trainee an opportunity to sit in a, a wheelchair that we have that we utilize to, to, to train, and then we would have the student sit in the chair as we would drive, you know, other students would drive around and take turns. So they kind of got an, a, a comprehension of what it's like to sit, you know, in, in that section of the vehicle, you know, in a chair. And, and it gives a better perspective. I, I completely agree. And that is definitely something that we can address and, and look at. Yeah, we need to get back, we need to get back to that. But that way they can feel how they are do when you're doing the turn. Absolutely. So you have to hold on to the chair and I'm a lot of the drivers, 
Thank you, man. Baby vehicles. I mean, y'all vehicles are their vehicles. And they're driving their like vehicles a little bit quick. Because they, they don't realize this is hot vehicles and not your own vehicle. Absolutely. I completely agree. Um, when I was in training, we used to say uh, when you have a customer that's using a wheelchair or an elderly person or anybody that may, you know, have, you know, needs some extra assistance, you should be making turns, picture a bucket of water sitting on the floor of the bus. And if you make that turn and the water doesn't spill, you made the turn at the right speed. If you turn too fast and water's sloshing all over the place, and of course it's in your mind, right? It's not, we're not actually using a bucket of water. But that's kind of a good gauge, you know, the standard is turning very slow, you know, it's 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 a safety issue. So we're definitely addressing. I promise you that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, maybe the, the uh, box. It have a GPS. Right. So your second uh, question was about the um, GPS, and he, um, Mr. Arizona, asked the manifests are behind the drivers' heads, and he wants to know if we don't have GPS technology. So I'm going to allow Mr. Alvarado to talk about that because we did just purchase some new technology. Yeah, so the new technology we purchased is going to have GPS with turn-by-turn -turn directions for the operator. So they'll mm -hmm. be able to see in front of them, not behind them or anywhere else, uh, exactly the lefts and rights that they need to make. So The reason I had them because mm -hmm. I was at the Central Alliance uh, last meeting with Ms. Gloria Mills. And we were waiting on our van, and we were waiting for when the other one of them, the other one of them, he did have not a lot. So the line is ready to close the doors, but they can't close until we leave. So when the driver, when I called off, the other one away, you got there, they like, He's there, like, no, he's not. I'm looking right at the door. He's not here. And, and that's the other thing, too, with this new system, and as you talk about GPS. So what he was, was, and the wall thing, I was like, I was like, he couldn't find out where he was, because she said that she left her, her phone at the, in the car, at the job. And the other GPS again was broken. So she's trying to find out where we're at. She never been there before. So she calling the office, the dispatch. They're not picking up. She been waiting on the phone. When they put that button, she had to wait till they pick up. She been waiting for like. 30 minutes, and he had not been done. So when she finally arrived, she was banging at me and Ms. Blue Mills, because Gloria is visually impaired. She's a fake. Me, I, I'm not worried too much, but you know, her, she calling and not telling her, her what, where the driver is and what's going on. So she's worried, she's keep calling. I'm trying to sure it's gonna be fine. It's gone down. But you know, when you're busy up here, you didn't say it enough. Right. So, so um, thanks for sharing that. Um, that's an unfortunate experience, and that's not the experience we want to provide to our customers. We do recognize that, you know, we need to ensure that the accuracy of the information is definitely clear so that as you wait, as the operator waits, you know, they know exactly where they need to go, where you are. And I would say from both perspectives, from the customer's perspective and the operator's perspective, that was not a pleasant experience for either. So we are working to implement the new technology so we can have more reliable real-time information, and it will work on both sides. So for our operators, they'll be able to see exactly where they need to be, and then from the customer's perspective, you will also have access to the same data point, so you'll be able to see exactly where the operator is. So that's what we're working to implement. Um, 
again, you know, this is not the experience we want you to experience. And I recognize that this is not all the time, but even if it's just once, you know, a month or once a year, it's still too many times. So we are, we are jotting that down and we'll make sure. And then as it relates to, you know, the responsiveness of dispatch, you know, that is something we can address right now. We don't need technology for that. So, you know, we have people staffed for our hours of operations. So there should not be a period of time where no one is picking up the phone. You know, we do recognize maybe there's multiple calls going on. So maybe there's a little delay, but it shouldn't be for that long. And we'll definitely address that and making sure that people are picking because up. Because she's looking for us and... She can't find us, and they're not helping her. They're not helping her about picking the phone up. Hold on. That's why I was saying that it's not, it's not good. But they had a GPS in, in their box. And their box is old. I know other, I know other, other transportation companies have a GPS. Built in to the dining box. Oh, you want right. to go. And, and we can also, um, we, we can take this offline and we can also look and see if there's some opportunities for us to leverage some of the technology that we currently have, like the tablets and the such. I know there were some conversations. So we can work um, with you offline and see if there's some opportunities to at least test some things out while we're waiting to deploy the new technology. I just have one more comment and then I'm done. Uh, uh, the the drivers I I know a lot of, a lot of drivers about many years. Uh, they are worried about this being privatized. Uh, I like you don't have to I don't know what that is, but I like y'all deal with it. But they 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 know me. They know for many many years, and they like. Well, we don't know how long we're going to continue to be able to work here. And they're going to, they're going to prioritize the the dirt. It's not going to affect the bus. It's going to affect our hot blood. No, so there is more about that. And, and the scheduling, they want to give you a little bit of life on the scheduling. The scheduler, it may not be from here. He may not know the roads as well as the driver does. But they may come from different county. They go by the computer or whatever. If you will get one of those veteran drivers who've been here a long time to go in there to assist with their scheduling, you could cut down a lot of your problems. And that's my, that's my, 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 my advice. Okay, well, thank you. Next is basic uh, transit infrastructure update, Mr. Dwayne Brown. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, um, committee members, Ms. Legrand. My name is um, Dwayne Brown. I'm the um, Basic Transit Infrastructure Program Manager, and I will be giving you the um, Basic Transit Infrastructure um, update for today. Um, over the past um, quarter, we've completed, we've, we've been through a total of 55 projects. We have one completed project, um, one project in um, pre-construction. We have um, five projects in permitting, uh, five projects in design, and we've completed 43 shelters, for, uh, completed installing 43 shelters. Um, the project that we completed was at um, Shell Point and 24th um, Street uh, down in South Shore ACC. This particular project was asked for um, by 
um, HCC South, South Shore, and we completed that project. Um, we, are, we are currently waiting on um, the concrete um, test to come back. Uh, after when we pour concrete, we have to wait um, 28 days to get the break back to, to, to ensure that it's over 3,000 PSI before we can place a shelter in there. So we're just waiting on that. That, that concrete break should come back tomorrow, and then we should be able to get a shelter in that, in that uh, a new shelter at that, at that site. But that one has been completed. Uh, we have um, one project in pre-construction. That's a project at Tampa Bay um, Boulevard and HCC. The, um, we were we kind of held off on that project because of, because of the, the close vicinity to um, Raymond James. You know, they had the football season that was ending, and we wanted to make sure that we had that project out of the way. But um, we didn't want to have it during the time when the football season was going. So that project is getting ready to get kick off here shortly. We have five projects in permitting. Um, the five projects is at Spruce and Clark and 34th and Lake, um, Falkenberg Road and MLK, Rolette Park Drive and Mulberry Street and Himes at Humphrey. And all of those um, have ADA issues that we're trying to address. Um, the five projects that we have in design are at um, Columbus Drive in Florida, Armenia at Waters, 21st Avenue at 43rd, 21st Avenue at 40th Street and Memorial um, Highway and George Road. Um, with the shelters, um, we currently have, like I said, we have um, 67 shelters uh, that we that that have been either purchased by Hart or our developers. Um, we have uh, 43 that has been installed, and we have 24 remaining. And you can see the breakdown here of what we have. So we have 64 percent of our shelters that have been installed, and um, we have about 30 um, 36 percent left to to do. Um, we have a couple of spots that, that we already picked out again, like Shell Point Road, as soon as that one um, comes in. As soon as that one, um, the, the concrete break comes back, we're going to be putting that one in. And then we have several other locations where we have already um, uh, earmarked that's going to go in as well. So we're going to try to get that completed as soon as we can. That's all I have. You have any questions from the committee? All right. Thank you. I don't have a question, but the work looks great thank you. based on the pictures. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Next is the roundtable discussion. Madam Chair, would you want to take up approval of the minutes at this time All since right. we do have a quorum? Section three in your packet, you'll find the meeting um, minutes from the November 17th ADA committee. Are there any comments or corrections? Is there a motion to approve the minutes from the November 17th, 2022 ADA meeting? I motion to approve. I Move second. Begging. Moved and second. I'll approve. Say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, we'll go to the round table discussion. Ms. Gran. Thank you, Ms. Madam Chair. Um, just a couple of quick things to share with you. You may have heard and Ms. Jenkins alluded to some of the discussions that, you know, we're looking at ways to continue to operate a sustainable system. Um, we're looking for ways, as you know, the referendum didn't pass the second round, so we're looking at ways to reduce some of our costs so that we can ensure that we can operate within the revenues that we have available. In addition to that, we're looking at opportunities to increase our revenue. So this is an ongoing process. It didn't just start you know, yesterday we've been going through this process for the last two years, but we're continuing to do so, especially since we recognize that an influx of new revenue probably will not be available for the next couple of years. So we are working on that. There are no um, plans on changing anything that we're doing right now. Our first step is really just looking at how we can contain costs. And then we're going to work with outside experts to identify opportunities to increase revenue as well as reduce costs. So we'll ensure that as we go through this process, we'll provide you with updates so you're familiar with what we're doing. And also to get your input on any ideas that you may have that would be beneficial to share amongst the larger 
organization and community. So those are my updates, thank you. Oh, wait, one last thing, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. We did have a heart board meeting last month and we voted on a new logo for heart. So if you have not um, seen that, we'll make sure it's made available to everyone. So we're gonna move away from the logo that you see here in the room with the heart that looks like just lines in a road to an actual, um, I would say, artist rendering of a heart. And we're changing our colors to include, um, I guess we're calling it a gold <coughs> color. So we'll still, we'll have three colors instead of the two that we currently have. So we have the dark blue, which represents the water of the Tampa Bay. And then we have the light blue that represents our great blue skies. And we're adding the gold to represent the nice warm sun that we have in our community. And then we'll have the heart-shaped logo. So just stay tuned um, and you'll start to see our branding change throughout the system. So that's pretty exciting and we're looking forward to that. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Poncho. Thank you, I always appreciate the opportunity to participate on this committee. Um, and I've always appreciated Hart's responsiveness to my inquiries whenever um, I've had concerns raised by community members, so thank you, Omar. Um, so I, I've actually received a couple of questions from community members, and I just want to make sure I'm accurately referring individuals. Um, I've been asked who the point of contact now is for ADA, and I'm assuming it, it's you, Omar, but I just wanted to make sure that I'm correctly sharing the information. Okay, thank you. Um, I've also received an inquiry in regards to the advisory group that, outside of this ADA advisory group, but a different uh, heart advisory group and what the status is of that. Is there any information that I could direct individuals to a web page or anything like that about that advisory group? Yes, yeah, so we still are taking applications. Uh, we are going through the process of processing, processing the first uh, initial, which was about 40 applications or so that we've gotten. Um, but we are trying to represent as much of the county as we can. And we do have some areas, I don't have them in front of me, but I can share those, uh, that we don't have any representation in yet. So uh, we're certainly happy to still continue to, uh, to get applications. Um, you can get the application on our website, but I have to double check if we've turned that link off, uh, which if we have, I can, I can send those out okay. electronically. Okay, thank you. Um, so in regards to the, the comment that was made earlier, and I also was contacted by Barry, and in regards to the concern that um, some of the informational materials that were being sent out to the community were not accessible to individuals. I know the city of Tampa is striving really hard to increase our access to our electronic information, so I can understand and empathize with um, possibly some lapses in those areas. Um, I've, this was the first time I've heard about concerns about access to information that your team had sent out, but I know, again, the city of Tampa is trying really hard to work on making sure that those materials are accessible. So. Yeah, and if you're talking particularly about, you know, getting the meeting invite after the deadline to, you know, give comment and all those things, uh, I'm going to double check back with my team and, and see exactly why that happened and just make sure we kind of clear that out and yeah. we're sending things, you know, at mm -hmm. the appropriate time. Also, in terms of, like, putting what I call car cards in the uh, paratransit vans, uh, we're going to see with our maintenance team to what extent we can do those and what the timetable will be on that. But I, I think it's a good idea, obviously, to have, you know, those things publicized in as many ways as we can, whether that's digital or traditional. Okay, excellent. So, um, the, and I appreciate that. The um, access that actually was reported to me was that the materials actually weren't accessible to a person who was using adaptive uh, programs on their computer. Understood. So, okay. okay. Um, and I was just wondering, you know, I, I've heard, you know, ongoing um, some concerns about the stop announcement, and I, I'd have to share, when I was at USF, we actually had the Office for Civil Rights called on us because we weren't making the stop announcements. Um, so a formal complaint was actually lodged against the university for that failure. So I just, uh, is there a way that your team actually double checks the systems before, I know that there's some requirements for making sure that the lifts are operable before a, a, a vehicle is deployed. Is there also that check? So as we, well? we do physical checks where okay. we'll take somebody 
uh, from the planning and scheduling department. And her sole job when we make changes is to go out there in that first week and audit the changes that we've made. So, you know, if we added a bus stop or something like that and there's an announcement that needs to be made, she's going out there and she's taking note of all the annou announcements that are being made, the ones that aren't reporting that back to our digital solutions group, who will then update the database, so to speak, and give that to our maintenance group so they can update that on every vehicle. Uh, so that is a ongoing project. Uh, I am going to have to check specifically about, you know, some of the stops that were mentioned today uh, to see exactly why those announcements weren't made. It might have been a vehicle issue, um, but I'll have to look into that a little further. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, and then I was just wondering if there's a possibility to do like a secret shopper uh, situation with Yellow Cab, especially with individuals who have service animals. I have heard pretty frequently about concerns of failure for pickups for people who have service animals. Um, historically, not, not specific to Yellow Cab, but I have heard you know, that sometimes people are hesitant to pick up individuals who have dogs and things like that. So um, I, I don't know. I, I, I was going to check in. Actually, I'm on the advisory board for self-reliance, too, to see if there was any concerns about failures for pickups for uh, consumers of self-reliance, I'm not sure by Yellow Cab. I've not heard of any concerns, but I, I do have worries about individuals who have service animals, especially um, people who um, are blind and is not able really to verify um, because they can't, you know, see if the Yellow Cab is coming up. If a Yellow Cab's coming up and they see a person has a service animal and they're taking off because they don't want to transport somebody, yeah. those are some great concerns that I have as well. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a secret shopper program is certainly a good idea. We can absolutely look into that. Um, I, I can tell you from a high level in terms of uh, what we're doing with Taxi Cab, you know, as our demand increases, uh, we're, we're going out there and we're going to put that out for, for rebid, so for okay. an RFP. Uh, we put in some things in that contract specifically to uh, speak to some of those concerns in terms of secret shopper, on-time performance, reliability, all those things. Uh, so, you know, that should be out in the next month or so. But in the short term, I certainly think uh, doing some sort of secret shopper program is a great idea. Okay, thank you. Mr. Stingding. Hey, uh, so Jerry Stickney with Sunshine covering for Scott Clark. I have nothing to add, but I did want to take the opportunity to, uh, you know, I've had the, the opportunity to work with some uh, hard staff with our day-to-day -day operations and hurricane evacuations. And uh, I appreciate the support that that y'all have given me in this role in helping support, and I just look forward to continuing building our relationship and, you know, helping Hillsborough County overall. So that's all I have and nothing else to, to present. So thank you. I'm sorry, I'd forgotten your name. <laughs> Rosa. So I'm Rosa Velasquez. I'm a customer service manager at Sunshine Line. Great to see you. Oh, sorry. Right here. Yeah. I thought I spoke loud enough, but I guess not. Um, just thank you for having us here. Um, I came in, good to see a lot of familiar faces. It's been a while since I've been in person to many of our meetings, the committees that I belong to, but great to see a lot of our familiar faces that I haven't seen in a while, and I'm here to support our new interim director, uh, Mr. Stickney, so great to see you all, you guys. Arizona. Um, uh, I think that's it, but I have one more question. Um, one other, one other driver was, was showing me on their phone that they have an app where you can download the app and buy your Hopla ticket on it. Is that true? I can't understand it. So, um, Madam Chair, may I? Okay, so Mr. Jenkins is stating that he saw on someone's phone that they had an app where they could download, um, uh, they saw an app where they can pay for their Heart Plus trips on the app, and he wants to know if that is indeed true. So, Mr. Alvarado, if you don't mind responding. Uh, that is available. So, it's available on the Move It app, M O O V I T. And it's also available on Token Transit, T-O-K-E-N. Uh, and you can buy one ticket. You can buy up to 10 tickets uh, for the for Heart Plus. So that is available now. You can do that right now. 
The ticket is for Heart Plus. It is for Heart Plus as well, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. Wow. And uh, the ticket will be mailed to my home? No, they'll be digital, right? So you buy them on your phone, and your phone becomes the ticket. So when you get on the vehicle, you just show the operator your ticket, and you go on, on your ride. So they don't have to be physically mailed to you. Well, I leave. I need help with that. <laughs> I can help you. Definitely. With that, no yes. And maybe, Mr. Alvarado, what we can do is put out some information that we can share with the community so that they know that this is available. And then maybe we can also list the steps on how to download it, upload your payment type, and all of that. I think I actually saw some news about it recently. I but I receive a lot of emails, but I thought I saw something like yeah, now available. There, there was like a press release. It was very quick, but I think we need to do a little more like mm -hmm. education and just showing people how they can actually physically do it from first step to, to writing. Uh, and then also, the next time you guys decide to do a test run on the time of calling it, please let somebody else know. You mean will it change the times that you call it? When you do that, when we, when we call before we up. Oh, yeah, for one day we, uh, we changed the booking to 3 o'clock. Uh, is, is that what you're talking about? There was... <laughs> Yeah, yeah we, we pulled away from that pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, That's why I was looking. I was trying to get a hold of you. Uh, uh, That's not good at all. You messed up my day with my life. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, yeah, we, we tested it for a day. Um, it did help us operationally a little bit in terms of, you know, booking trips and all those things because it allowed us to line up when we finish booking with when we have to put together uh, our staffing for the next day. Uh, the problem was that there were a lot of people that usually wait until 4 or 5 o'clock to book, and they weren't able to book those trips. Right. Um, I will say, you know, we have that three-day window, so I think, you know, that that might have been some of that. But, yeah, we went away from that pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I had to pay out of pocket. Not good. That was a bad move. Fair. Fair. <laughs> we learned from our bad days very quickly. That was a bad move. <laughs> Miss LeBeau. Uh, this is Carmen Labou with Hillsborough County ADA Office. Um, thank you for all the wonderful things that you are doing, uh, especially with technology. I, I, I love hearing about this app, um, and it's an opportunity f maybe to post the information in your buses so that the people that use them can um, know that that is available for them. Um, also, just two minor concerns um, about uh, the, the users is the, if you may consider revisiting your, your website so that information about this meeting is readily available. Uh, right now, it's, um, it's a little bit difficult uh, for them to uh, find information. And if you can add um, maybe the contact uh, information for the office or person that, that can be reached, if, shall there be uh, ADA issues or concerns? from the users so they can uh, contact your office. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, yeah. the, the media info sometimes is a little hidden. And, mm -hmm. you know, for me, if you got to do more than three clicks on a website to find something, it's, yeah. it, it gets a little arduous. So, yes. yeah, we'll, we'll definitely take note of that. Thank you so much. That's all. Mr. Alvarez, do you have anything else? Uh, no, n nothing else for me. Thank you. Okay. I have one uh, comment. This is going to be my very last meeting. I'm resigning as your chairman and also from the committee. I have a lot of medical issues that I have to take care of, and right now that takes priority. So um, I've handed in my resignation, and I want to thank everybody for letting me do this. I also want to thank Danielle and all her people for everything that they have been doing for us, setting up, getting the agendas and everything out, and the AV department for taking care of everything else. So thank you all. Madam Chair, you also have Director Wazork on the line. You have Maddie on the line. Do you want to see oh. if she wants to speak for roundtable? You're right. I'm sorry, Maddie. <laughs> no worries. Um, yes. Thank you. I'm Maddie. I work with the GROW group. Um, I had a couple things I wanted to talk about. I wanted to first say thank you for having, been on this, having the opportunity to be on this committee. Um, one thing I did want to follow up and I really have an inquiry about is the cross-county services. 
last year during one of the meetings, um, I believe that there was some information that was shared about cross-county transit, um, and I, I have not heard any updates on that since, and so I was curious if there was any news about cross-county services. This Jerry's ticketing with Sunshine Line, so I, I can speak about this. We uh, we, we kicked that off uh, in uh, October, November time frame. So for um, coordination with that, uh, working with PSTA, for anyone that's interested within uh, Hillsborough County, they can call Sunshine Line. Uh, it's 272-7272. Try to keep it very simple. Um, and, and call and speak with one of our, our representatives. They'll walk through the process, and we'll, we're sending referrals to PSTA. Uh, and then PSA will coordinate it and reach back and, and help you get connected with uh, whichever service you provide for those cross-county trips. Um, so c contacting Sunshine Line, and we can help you uh, connect with that. Thank you so much, Jerry. That's incredibly helpful. I appreciate that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask about, um, I, I'm a job coach in the community, and I recently had a client that I was advocating for for Heart Plus, and so I went with them to the Heart Plus interview, um, the interview was at 1.30, and we arrived a few minutes early. Um, we're in the lobby, and it was lunchtime for the Hart employees. Um, and there was no sign that said people were at lunch. There was The whole lobby was quite full, um, and there was a line waiting for the window, um, and there was nobody back there. My client, her appointment was at 1.30, and we weren't seen by anybody until around 2 o'clock. Um, and I feel I want to really advocate for especially individuals with intellectual or developmental or cognitive disabilities that would have been very confused and not really known what to do if they had that interview and didn't know who to talk to or what door to go to or how to, to get that interview when their appointment was at 1 and nobody was, or one thirty and nobody was around. Uh, and when we read that, if when you're doing the, going to the interview, they tell you to book your ride early so you can be there on time. So when the other person is leaving, you can come right in. And then you can also put in the fact that you live, maybe you live way right on the other side of town. And they had to, they had to book you on a van where other people didn't have to ride. And don't forget this is the shared ride. So that's why I do it that way. So you can make sure you're there on time, and they can take the time to do the interview, take the pictures, let the pictures taken outside and in the lobby. So they want they want to make sure you have enough time to do all that, and they get you back home at the job. That's why when they when they call you for an interview, they ask you what time. Do you want to come? Do you want to come in this blood line? Or do you want to come in the other blood line? So based on what you tell them, it what the, the time is going to be for your enemy. There's nothing they can do about that. Madam Chairman, um, thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, I will also share that we are looking at the entire interview process and we're looking at ways to make improvements there. So I appreciate you sharing your experience. Again, that is not the experience that we would like you to have to um, endure. So we are going to take your feedback and um, make sure that it is addressed. And then, as I stated, we are looking across the organization at ways that we can make improvements to, in, I would say, increase our customer um, experience and make it a better experience for all of our internal and external customers. So this is definitely one of those areas that's on the list that we're focusing on and we'll be able to at the next meeting provide an update of the changes that we've made to ensure that that experience is not um, felt by anybody else. Thank you. Okay. Any new business? Thank you. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Is there any new business? Actually, Madam Chair, if I could just share something from old business. 
Um, I just wanted to thank two teams. One is Sunshine Line. I was recently helping a person who has mobility disabilities as well as acquiring new visual limitations, and Sunshine Line was very helpful at um, getting the application. I was helping her with conference calling, um, and the team was very helpful. I've also connected her with Hart. Your team has been incredible as well. Um, the fact that you are actually offering her uh, transit to do the interview was a great relief for her because she, was not, she wasn't going to be able to come independently without some assistance. So I really appreciate um, that service as well. Thank you. Any other business? If there's none, do we have a motion to um, close the meeting? Uh, well. Before we do that, I just would like to thank you on behalf of HEART um, for your commitment to the organization, for your service as the chair of this committee and ensuring that you kept us abreast of the experiences that the committee members and as well as your cohort of riders have experienced. So I want to take this moment since you did announce that you were re resigning from your role. Um, and I think I speak on behalf of the rest of the committee members. Um, that we have been better served having you as our leader in this capacity than without you. So thank you so much and wish you the best on this next step in your journey. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Meeting is adjourned.